Well, looking back, you know, I, I thought uh, the adjustment that the position coaches and the coordinators made at halftime, they did an excellent job. I thought the players did an excellent job of, of doing what they're coached to do in the second half. We, we shut down, for the most part, the interior run uh, that uh, Cal Poly had quite a bit of success with the fullback up the middle or the quarterback follow up the middle. And that was nice to see that shut down. They had to go to the perimeter to get some yardage and then eventually to the passing game, which uh, we did a good job really stifling that part of their game. And then as far as our offense, you know, it was nice to see it get sparked and uh, get rolling along. And uh, the production level was fairly high. And, you know, just the fact of being able to hold on to the ball for over 10 minutes in that fourth quarter and have having a couple long drives in that second half was uh, was a lot of fun because we'd had some some movement with the football, but nothing sustained. It was nice to see that uh, to go 90 yards, I think, on two occasions. So that was a neat thing to see. And then, uh, you know, shifting gears to Eastern, uh, you know, tremendous, tremendous team. The thing you have to remember about Eastern, too, is they've had, as we had had in the past, you know, three, four games to prepare for the playoffs. That team's been together really a month longer than any other program except, I guess, Delaware and Eastern. Uh, so, you know, they know each other very well. And sometimes it, uh, that really shows up, especially when you talk about Bo Levi Mitchell, Mitchell throwing to Kaufman. I mean, their timing is impeccable. It's, it's amazing. Uh, just breaking down the Washington game. Uh, you can tell Mitchell has a lot of faith and trust in Kaufman. He goes to him, irregardless if Kaufman's covered or not, and they make big plays. So that's, uh, that's something that's very impressive to watch on their video as far as what they do on their offense. So that's one thing we really need to attack and, and attempt to shut down. Don't know if we'll completely stop that part of their game because of their excellent timing, but we need to slow it down. Uh, their defense, you know, a lot of, a lot of players back. Uh, the Johnson brothers out of uh, the Tumwater area in Washington have had great careers there. And, you know, they move around linebacker and safety, so they do a great job. Um, so it's going to be a very formidable opponent. Obviously, they're not going to be in good mood because of their last two weekends. And, um, you know, we've challenged a team that Eastern has always played well in Missoula, always. So. We have to uh, be at, at the top of our game. Cal Poly is really an attacking style of run game, much different than Eastern Washington's run game because Eastern Washington relies a lot on the draw, <clears throat> as you saw last year with Taiwan Jones, and they're running the draw again this year, and it, it is probably their most successful run play because of their passing game. So now it puts a lot of, of pressure on our defensive line because, you know, they've You've been used to, uh, for a little over a week, people attacking their legs and trying to get them totally uh, you know, blown up, so to speak, to more of a pass protection type of, of uh, run game or a zone scheme similar to our offense. So the defensive line, it's tough to shift gears. It really is, and, and that's something that uh, the defensive staff's working hard at. Um, I think that's the biggest difference other than having to, you know, cover people. And they have a, a very good offensive line. Their center's probably one of the best at our level. So their pass protection is very solid. Uh, did a good job against the Huskies in Seattle pass protecting. So uh, those things, shifting gears, are, are critical. We can't waste any time. Well, again, um, we have to help take Bo Levi out of the game. Our secondary has to help take him out of the game by great coverage first and foremost. Uh, and that starts with Kaufman. And actually, Kaufman's not even the leading receiver, but you can tell the timing is, is so good with those two players. So they're going to you know, rely on some other receivers as well to, to get that job done. But I, I think that uh, you know, just he's throwing at 60% again this year. For as many balls as he's thrown, that's a pretty high percentage. You know, he threw for a career last year of touchdowns, almost 37 or some ungodly amount of touchdowns. Can't, can't believe it, because that's a lot. Um, but his release is so fast, 
Uh, he's got decent height, and he can run the football when he, as he did against us on the fourth down play last year that, that really got them out of some trouble. We thought we had him pinned, and, and they went for it on fourth, and they ran the naked bootleg, and, and he's a good enough athlete to hurt you with his feet as well. So uh, major challenge for our defense. If you do all your time preparing stuff to pass, then you know you, you can't forget about the run game either because those are a lot of the same people that blocked for Taiwan Jones. Now Taiwan is was a special player. Obviously, he's making uh, a lot of money right now playing on Sundays and Monday nights, uh, as he was last night. But uh, the point being, those offensive linemen are still the ones that did a tremendous job in the run blocking. So we can't fall asleep in that area as well. When anybody drops back to pass with the opponent, I never feel comfortable. It's just so many things can happen in the passing game. Uh, you never, you never feel comfortable. Uh, you know, Tennessee had quite a few yards against Cincinnati. Scored, scored a lot of points. So, uh, you know, you have to think back that that was a pretty good receiver core that we saw in that first game. And our secondary, I think it's just a matter of those guys playing together a little bit more because we lost three starters. I think anybody in the country that loses three starters, there's an uncomfortable situation going into your first, you know, probably three or four games till we solidify which safety does which thing best and which corner is it Houston or is it Donnie in certain situations. And, and obviously you're going to need depth down the stretch. So I think that's always going to be a work in progress. Well, I think we had a pretty good idea by the time halftime came around of of exactly what coverage we were seeing. And, and we had some certain plays that we had uh, practiced the previous week. And we knew they would be good plays, but we just had to, to be a little more stubborn and stay with them. And, and just if it didn't work once, to throw it away, that wasn't the case. Some of it was individual technique that why they didn't work. It wasn't the scheme or the plan. So we went back to those things that we had talked about all week. and, and uh, it became very efficient. Uh, you know, Jordy threw the ball very well, and our offensive line did a great job of protecting. And when when you know Jordy had to scramble around a little bit, um, he did some really good things, either keeping the ball or or holding it and then throwing it. So that all seemed to come into place a lot, you know, more efficiently in the second half. Well, actually, their slots blocked a lot different. Bill, it, they had the arc release to get head up on our safeties because they couldn't go in and cut the linebackers as they did last year. They went right in and cut on a diagonal you know, uh, line and, and cut them low you know, below the waist, uh, which is a very dangerous block. And that's the whole intent of the rule change is to get rid of the, you know, the unprotected defensive player. And so they really have to arc release and then become head up before you can cut, or you have to be going towards the sidelines and the player has to be outside of you to be able to cut. As we do on our screen game, you'll see the lineman cut as they run towards the sideline or another, or our slot receiver cut the corner. Um, and there was actually, you know, probably three or four that were still very debatable calls that could have gone either way. And, and we talked to the officials uh, about those blocks previous, you know, in before the game started, just because of uh, of really safety for more for no other reason. Well, I, I think some of it, uh, you see the progression a little bit too, as, as John alluded to the fact that sometimes we'd throw something out and those linebackers from Tennessee were there. Or we'd run, we'd throw a, you know, a wide pass to Peter Wynn and it looked really good. And all of a sudden it was a seven yard gain and it looked like it was gonna be a 15 yard gain. And again, that was credit to their linebackers. And, and I think uh, that helped, I think when we watched the video after Saturday night's game that, uh, you know, not having that type of team speed, I think we looked a little better, you know, and that's probably obvious. But, uh, but overall, it, come, it doesn't matter who you're playing. You still have to throw it to the right person. You still have to make the right reads. That person still has to catch it. He has to do something with it after the catch. And our offensive line has to give the quarterback time. And, and, that, and that's hard to do because, you know, you, each play is different. You know, they might run a d different defensive front, so John might get a different look. And the next play, Jordy might get a blitz off the other side away from John, so we have to know exactly what they're trying to do each and every play. Well, they've, they've uh, moved uh, Johnson 
number 10 in, into uh, a linebacker role <clears throat> and he plays a lot like uh, a lot like Sherritt. Um, again JC Sherritt's w is a very special player and uh, you know one of the best players I've seen at any level just making plays every single time uh, just the amount of times he he alone tackled Chase Reynolds in the two years I've, I've been here uh, was amazing uh, and that and Chase Reynolds obviously a great player too but I think defensive line wise they have more depth than they had last year and they're you know unfortunately they're going to be able to play a few more people uh, than we would like them to play up front you know Williams is you know I got calls from the national media on Williams this summer their their defensive tackle and uh, I mean a lot of calls why he was an All-American, why he was, will be up for the Buchanan Award, all those things. And uh, so, you know, there, there's a lot of publicity out there about Eastern's defense because of the run they had because of J.C. Sherrod. And, and, you know, I think they've backed it up. I think they're a very, very good defensive team. You know, South Dakota, I really credit their quarterback for some of that difference in the game because he was able to to keep the ball away from, from Eastern and, and, again, win – South Dakota and Washington got ahead of Eastern. You know, they had to continue to throw, obviously. Couldn't really sustain a ground attack. So, so the, I think that's some of the reason why Eastern has such great stats in the passing game is because they've had to throw the last two games. And South Dakota got an interception that was, you know, a, a big changer, and they ran it back and scored. So uh, I, all those factors really played into the game. But, but really, I give South Dakota's quarterback a lot of credit. Well, I, th I think the, you know, some of the coverages that South Dakota used, you know, they use an array of them, trying to confuse uh, the quarterback, and obviously we're going to do some of those things too, and and, and some of the pressures that, that they used, uh, you know, you can't copy them verbatim because they're obviously going to have a plan for them, but you definitely want to give the illusion that uh, you're going to do everything they, they did and maybe do a little more. Yeah, it's a lot more exciting. Last week was more about just being disciplined and taking care of your key. And you know, you had on the option, you had a, a specific responsibility, whether it be the the dive or the quarterback or the pitch. You just had to be real disciplined in your game plan. And this game, we still have to be disciplined and not allow big plays, but we have more uh, freedom to just pin back our ears and you know get after the quarterback a little bit. Oh, it's pretty difficult shifting gears from one offense to the other, but I think it's a. Our offense being the, the type of offense it is, we, we constantly have to you know switch gears. There's not too many offenses that can assimilate what Jordy Johnson and our offense does to us in practice. So we're constantly having to you know to to evolve and change to each offense each week, so it won't be too different for us. Yeah, the draw play is just something we have to be aware of. You know, we can't just recklessly rush the passer, and we have to have lane responsibility and not let allow an easy uh, escape route for that running back if they do decide to draw on us. We have to have good discipline. And, you know, watch out for that draw play, but we can't. But it still can't slow us up trying to get to the quarterback. We can't respect it too much, but we just have to be aware of it and keep our lane integrity rushing the passer. Yeah, they definitely turned into a rival for us in recent years. They've given us, you know, g good games for the past couple of years. And just coming off those two losses last year, that was probably the worst feeling I've ever had in my career. So we just have been a lot, you know, real motivated since the since winter conditioning and summer to get, you know, to avenge those two losses and. We're back on the right track with last week's uh, victory, but we have to look, we'll look forward to this opponent. And, you know, they're very, they're very uh, potent offense, so we have to do everything we can in practice and preparation this week to try to shore that up and make sure we're all on the right game plan. Yeah, I think we did. We, uh, that's just the, the characteristic or the personality of our defensive coaches, and we, they just demand that we have, you know, high effort and high intensity level coming into game plan, regardless of who our opponent is. It's more about us than, than who we're playing, regardless of. If it's an SEC score or Cal Poly, we have to be, be intense. That's just what, how you have to, how your uh, attitude has to be to play good defense. Uh, in the second half, we definitely executed a lot, lot better than we had been in the first half. Um, we were having troubles with the snaps. You know, the O line wasn't, um, you know, blocking as well as we were capable of. And you know, we heard about it at halftime, and you know, we made the adjustments and you know, made a few tweaks here and there, and it just really helped us out a lot. Cal Poly's defensive line was um, a lot more up, up the field type rusher guys rather than just kind of, you know, get off the ball and read where the play is going and then, you know, pursue the ball. And definitely um, 
Tennessee's linebackers were obviously much faster than Cal Poly's linebackers were. Um, Cal Poly's linebackers were still, you know, a good group of guys, and you know they played hard. But um, <clears throat> we caught them a few times out of you know where they were supposed to be. You know, get some good blocks, and we made some big plays on them. Definitely, I mean, I think even more so than um, last week against Cal Poly because you know they are the you know the, they were the national champions last year, and you know that's this is one of the biggest games we'll probably play all year just in our conference and uh, it's definitely a revenge game for us, you know, and uh, I think we'll be ready for it. Um, you know, we made an emphasis starting spring ball that we were going to take care of the ball because, um, you know, I, that hurt us a lot last year turning it over. But, uh, you know, I think it was big for us to not turn it over and stop one of those long drives that we had going. They're very athletic and they have a lot of them. Um, you know, they fly to the ball. Um, you know, they're going to be tough to handle, but I think we can do it. I feel pretty good about it. Um, there were some plays on Saturday, even when I threw a touchdown, but, I, you know, I really didn't feel good about, uh, you know, watching the film. But, you know, I just need to keep better, getting better every day. You know, I'm definitely excited to play on Saturday against, you know, our rival, one of our rivals. And, uh, you know, it was hard watching that game last year. I mean, we had so many chances to win the game, and, you know, I just hope if we get those same chances, we can capitalize on them this year.